Before you watch this video, make sure you've got your Bible, time to think, and time to pray it in at the end. That's right, coronavirus is here, it's real, it's going to affect many, 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 many thousands of people and we are in it for the long haul, no question. If you pick up a newspaper or listen to the news or take a look at your news feeds online, the main headlines at the moment are all about the coronavirus pandemic. It's been described as the greatest emergency situation of our age. But to make bad situation worse, wickedness is all around us too. People panic buying items such as toilet rolls and pasta without a care for others. And people spreading malicious rumors about coronavirus, presumably as clickbait or simply to get a kick out of seeing people panic. But if we're honest, if it wasn't coronavirus, then it would be something else. War, climate change, conflicts, scandals, and other such things. Life is full of trouble, and sadly, it is often full of wickedness too. And I'm sure I'm not alone in wondering what is God doing about all of these things? Our world is full of trouble and wickedness, and it might seem that God is doing nothing, or even worse, that he's turning a blind eye to it altogether. Thankfully, into such situations, God speaks to us. And one way that he has done this is through a book of the Bible called Habakkuk. Habakkuk lived about 600 years before Jesus. He was a prophet, which meant he had the job of speaking and passing on God's word to God's people and speaking to God on their behalf. But that wasn't an easy job. For hundreds of years, God's people had been rejecting God and doing their own thing. And here's where our story begins. God's people were being ruined from the inside out by their own wickedness and their own rebellion against God. And Habakkuk? Well, there was nothing he could do but cry out to God for help. So let's take a look at the first four verses of Habakkuk. How long, Lord, must I cry for help, but you do not listen? Or cry to you, violence, but you do not save? Habakkuk wasn't happy. The nation of Israel was going from bad to worse. I mean, look at the words used to describe what life there was like. You got violence, injustice, wrongdoing, destruction, strife, conflict. What a mess. And at the heart of this, we see in verse 4, God's law was being ignored. People just did whatever they wanted. Plus, there was no justice. And if you did the right thing, you were more likely to suffer for it than be rewarded. This was Habakkuk's situation, and it's not massively different to our world today. Struggling with trouble and wickedness in the world is sadly part of our everyday lives. People all around the world are facing terrible messes of situations. And this was true before the coronavirus pandemic, and it's especially true now as the world struggles to cope with this awful situation. Coronavirus or not, our world is seriously messed up. And it should break our hearts to see the innocent suffer, but more so to see God's rule ignored by a world full of people that only care about themselves. As we look around us, we may rightly feel that the only thing that we can do is cry out in desperation. That's what Habakkuk did. But he made sure he cried out to the only one who can do something about it. He cried out to the Lord, his God. But there was a bigger problem for Habakkuk than just the bad stuff that was happening around him. You see, when he cried out, God was silent. It felt like God was just letting this stuff go on. I mean, if you take a look at verse two, you see Habakkuk say, you do not listen. And again, in verse two, he cries out, you do not save. And in verse three, why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Habakkuk couldn't understand God's silence. Where are you? was his cry. 
Now, Habakkuk wasn't attacking God. He knew who God is and what he is like. And even though God seemed silent, he still cried out to God anyway, because he knew God was the only one who could answer his questions. And God was the only one who could truly do something about it. Habakkuk was clearly struggling with things, but that didn't stop him crying out to God. As created beings, we can never fully know God or understand how he works. But faith in God means trusting him and looking for ways to know him better. Even in the times where things are tough and we simply don't understand what God is doing or why he is doing it. That's what Habakkuk did. And this is what we should do too. When all is going wrong around us, when it seems that God is silent, these are the very times when it's okay to, and in fact, we need to cry out to him, where are you, Lord? And amazingly, God is a God who answers our cries. This idea of his sovereignty, God's justice, and the answers that he gives to our cries in the face of great trouble and distress can be a difficult thing to understand and come to terms with. Just take a look at Habakkuk. He really struggled with God's answer, and we'll look at this in more detail as we work through the rest of the book. But to start off with, when we find ourselves crying out to God for help, the most important thing for us is that we know who God is and what he is like. Now, I don't know what situations you face, especially in this present situation, which seems so bleak and so extreme. You may be self-isolating because you have some of the symptoms of the disease. You may be one of the people most at risk from the effects of the virus, and so you're socially distancing yourself from others. You might even know someone who is very ill, or sadly, has even died because of it. You may be feeling life is in a desperate mess and you just can't see any way out. Or you may feel that the situation is not as bad as it seems, but nonetheless, you can see the impact that this outbreak is having all over the world and that is making you fearful and full of concern. Well, when you find yourself wondering what on earth God is doing in such situations, remember that the only person who is truly in control who is truly able to carry out perfect actions and who alone is in a position to give you the answers that you need is God himself. So turn to him, talk to him, cry out to him if you need to. He will hear you and he will answer, but maybe not in the way you would expect. And that is what we'll see in the next part of the book of Habakkuk. Thank you.